Hey guys, g -Roll here again. So today's video is not specifically a build, but rather a tutorial for Devastators. The reason behind it is because my buddy just recently started his Devastator and I figured, hey, why not share the tips I gave him to make him a better Devastator with you all. So here's what we're going to cover. Faster is better, sequence is everything, pace yourself, you are not Rambo, have fun, and obviously some extra tips towards the end. So please stay tuned for that. So tip number one is pretty basic, and rather it's pretty simple, specific to your Seismic Smash. Now, if you didn't know, there actually is two speeds to it. Matter of fact, there's your normal Seismic Smash with an Assault Rifle, and then there is your slightly faster speed with a Hand Cannon. So you want to kind of learn how to switch between your handgun and your assault rifle when you're using your seismic smash now the speed is minimal but it is definitely does help you out in the long run so when you're first learning how to smash typically people don't know to press the forward button if you just smash naturally then he smashes and kind of freezes in his animation and just smashes the ground but if you press the forward button at the same time he's going to smash twice as fast uh with an assault rifle but even three times as fast with a handgun and you're going to see here shortly so when you switch to a handgun you're going to see here that i smashed the ground a lot faster com when compared to using an assault rifle or, or any other gun for that matter moving on to some gameplay you're going to first see me use my handguns and how fast i'm smashing with that and then you'll see me switch to my assault rifle and you'll see me once again using my uh, seismic smash and you see the difference in speed and then once finally you'll see here in slow-mo at 30% between the difference between the two. So tip number two is probably the most important because it is true. Sequence is everything in our riders, specifically when you're trying to maximize the damage. Now, typically the way I do it is I'll do my seismic smash first. Then from there, I'll switch to my assault rifle get my Wrath of Moloch going or my Deadly Disturbance on depending on what gun you're using, switch to Impale and then switch, finally switch to my Nimoy to maximize my money wins. The more damage you do overall is affected through your sequence of events. So typically the proper sequence is by not proccing all your ability at once. Now if you're on my Frozen build like I've, sh I've posted before, if you proc all your abilities, yes, the damage is going to be insane and you're going to be able to kill everything quickly, but now you've kind of limited yourself and, and taken away the ability to stay alive. Now, I run, I personally run Adrenaline, and I've mentioned it before that Adrenaline to me is an underrated mod because once you're below 30%, it gives your abilities, it procs your abilities, excuse me at 50% allowing you to get your abilities even faster but if you're not running adrenaline then you're really limiting yourself to being able to stay alive and it makes it harder so you have to remember uh, space your abilities out prop your golem then prop a leap and then once your golem is back then go ahead and prop a trimmer that way you keep your DPS going you keep that 45% you keep that 75% going and you switch out between all your abilities So worst case scenario, let's say we go into a room and it's filled with captains. Now, solo-wise, you can typically kill all the ads in the room without a problem. But when you're playing with teams, obviously everyone knows their health kind of triples for that matter because now you're playing in a team-based environment. And if you're, all you're doing is DPS because you've procced all your abilities, you're now limiting yourself to being able to heal. So you might be able to kill a captain or two, but now you can't heal because you don't have tremor of golem and ultimately resulting in you dying. So you have to learn how to probably sequence and space out your abilities to maximize damage and maximize survivability. So tip number four is just as important as the rest, but you have to remember one thing. A lot of people get into the habit of just using their gun and not using their abilities. So you have to remember you are not Rambo for that matter. 
And unlike Rambo, you actually have abilities. So you have to know when to proc your abilities and when to use your gun skill and kind of find a, a, a happy medium for the both. So typically, when I look left or right, I shouldn't be hearing this. And if I look right, I definitely shouldn't be watching this. Now tip number five is to ultimately have fun. For example, you got it, Ratchet? Nah, bro, I'm getting it. Watch this. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh, good. How's it going? I, I gotta keep reloading my gun. <laughs> you got it, Ratchet. Come on. I got this, bro. Oh my goodness. There's another room, mother. That's why I'm getting tucked up. Nah, bro. I got. Oh my goodness. Oh. They hit so hard. <laughs> you got it, man. You're a devastator, man. Dig deep. Almost, almost, Ratchet. You almost got it. <clears throat> almost got one dead, dude. There you go. Elvery's coming. Nah, man, I'm gonna hit nine at the end. Uh, I got it, man. That was on me. Oh, wow. That was so fast. <laughs> Here's a few extra tips. So, since we're using our handguns to increase the speed of our seismic smash, it might help us to go ahead and find. A handgun that has ultimate vulnerability and resistant break. Ultimate vulnerability increases our weapons damage, while resistant break increases our ability damage, which increases our seismic smash and stuff to that nature. Now, it would also help to find uh, guns with deadly disturbance or an infernal seed with a Wrath of Moloch. The reason behind that is because Broodmothers and Alphas, they have this protective armor, Wrath of Moloch and the Deadly Disturbance destroys that, making them vulnerable to damage from your ability and your weapon's damage. Finally, you have a field of view. Now, default, it comes at, I believe, 90%, and it shortens your field of view, allowing you to see so much. Now, if you can increase that to 110 or anywhere above 100, you'll be able to see a lot more allowing you to be able to kind of dictate the battlefield and let you figure out what, what you want to do. So you'll see the difference between 90% and 110%. In the video, you're going to see Zahidi barely in the picture at 90%, while at 110%, you see Zahidi clearly as day in the picture and objects around him. So that's always something to consider down the road. With that said, this brings us to the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the five tips 
of how to be a devastator. Uh, if you guys want to see more and new and crazy content, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up and turn that bell notification. I'm going to leave the link to, the, to our Discord community. Come join us and come have some fun. But for now, have a blessed day.